make sure it sound right, boy. That's the water you can get. I've told everybody all the lies and promises that they need to hear and encourage everybody to get involved now, just need to deliver and get everybody's bike together. So I reckon, we've got, I think we've got over 10 bikes now, including the three, we've got the three here that are finished. And um, well, the first the first round was going to be in March, you know, the start of March. I think it might be a little bit, pushing it a little bit with the new shop and whatnot, which is happening. But um, I'm, I'm, if that doesn't happen, we'll be going to Map Park in Easter. And I've got 55 two sprockets on all of them, which is pretty much the same ratio as standard. Because at, at Alan Ben, they hit them right. I think that one there, which is still 240. This at one? the end of the straight, yeah, that, that one, one at the end there, 240, just got a little bit on top here. But it's good, they hold these handlebars and that, they're just yeah, you know, $100 handlebars and you know, bits and pieces like that. So if we crack them, whatever, that sort of bits, you know, it's not going to be crazy expensive. Yeah. Yeah, heaps of people jumping on board, more people coming and seeing them, people are, you know, like everyday people coming into the shop and, you know, asking about it, talking about it, so just keep, keeping the ball rolling, sort of it grew a lot bigger than, you know, we wanted to have six bikes, you know, then one minute we had four, then we had five, and next thing I know people are coming in and, and I've turned around, there's frames and wheels and petrol tanks and engines and everything everywhere, thinking, oh my god, how are we going to make all this happen? Well, I'm 24, what's, what's the history with 24 and she and mother shit? Well, 24 is my bike, so it's obviously the coolest one out of the whole lot. But yeah, that's my old stunt bike. That's the bike that I was going to ride right before I had my accident. It looks a lot different to that now, but yeah, that's the one I was going to ride then. And unfortunately, the tyre was flat and I didn't, you know. But So that's going for my stunt bike. And then I'm thinking about, you know, I wasn't going to do stunt riding anymore, obviously. What am I going to do with it? And, you know, I thought, let's bloody encourage everybody to go race them. So that's what we're going to do, you know. But that's, yeah, definitely the one where they all came from to start with, yeah, for sure. people like you know if they want to buy one they can come and obviously they have a ride of mine or someone someone you know everyone that's bought one so far they're cool you know they're good guys and I'm wrapped to be going to be part of the um, part of the you know the first rollout of them and people can have a ride on like that but I probably I won't they're so like they are expensive you know like even though we're buying them as crash bikes and everything by the time they finish up there you know by the time we do the motor they're probably twenty twenty five thousand dollars each so no I won't, they won't be I, I don't think I'll be having them on a showroom floor ready to go, you know. And then, because everybody's different, so none of these two bikes are the same. They've all got different wheels and different this, different that. So, yeah, well, who knows? Who knows what could happen, mate? Like, if it takes off like that, then yeah. And everything's always for sale. Someone can buy mine if they really want, and I'll go build another one, but... It, it's got all the right amount of money, but it'd be, it'd, be good, it'd be good if we got to that stage where we had them there for sale, but we'll see how it goes, yeah. Especially, you know, this time of year as well, it's summer, so we're flat knackered with the shop as well. So there's, there's plenty going on, and you know, we pretty much work 24 hours a day as it is, so... Um, but we'll get there, we'll get the time to build the bikes, and we'll make it all happen. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna get a couple of, when we get a new shop, get some more people on board, so... That'll be better, you know, that'll speed up the process, for sure. Also got Brembay, um, Brembay brakes and the brake upgrade brake mounts here for the for the Brembay calipers. Yeah. And uh, suspension's got only suspension in the rear and uh, a lot of horsepower as well on top of the standard engine. So right. this thing goes like absolute freaking nothing. Nice. So what do you? Stink. What's uh, so is every bike going to be identical pretty much or? Pretty much, that's the idea of it. Yeah. So we're just, um, we're, get, we're working that out now. Yeah. Just, uh, there's a few that are a little bit different. Like yeah. With the, uh, depends how much people want to spend on the engines. Yeah, but, uh, right. I'm 
So we're at what stage are you at with this one? Oh, we're getting there, we've just got a, just got a bolt on the shockers. Right. Yeah, new ones of them, new one of them. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's not that far away. Excellent. But it'll need the motor done, but we'll just try and get it going with a bit of practice for now. Yeah. And then, uh, that's how they start out, and then they end up a race bike. So where, 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 where did it come from? Was it a tired old cruiser before? This or? one was an accident damage from Melbourne. Oh, okay. Just hit a kangaroo here. Still, right. got, still got a bit of fluff left on it. Okay. Hey, look here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, poor Skippy. Poor Skippy. <laughs> long, long as everyone's okay. Everyone's all good. <laughs> We've been buying the bikes from the auctions over in Melbourne or from Michael from Adrenaline Performance, been getting them off him, getting them back to the shop and then, you know, straight up, you know, the wheels been getting changed, we're changing the forks, putting longer forks in them, fork internals, um, another mate of ours, Mark, is making the twin disc brake front end conversions for them, different handlebars, clutch purchases, front brake mass cylinders, quick turn throttles, different suspension on the back, uh, different wheels, custom rear brake rotors, custom chain and sprocket kits, um, rear set foot pegs that we've had made and they're all getting, we just spent you know, a massive amount of money getting 20 sets of those made, um, rear set foot pegs for them, because no matter, no matter how we're making the bikes, the foot pegs are still the limiting, limiting factor. And then, so that's the chassis mods, different petrol tanks, if some people have different tanks on them, seats are getting changed, taking a whole heap of weight off them, all the indicator wiring and tail light wiring and cutting the rear guards down and then making mounts to mount, you know, the number boards on them and and then that's even before we've even thought about let's pull the engine apart, you know, hot that up so then we've been pulling them apart, we've either been boring the crankcases out on them, but fitting 110 cubic inch um, top ends, so we've all got the 110 cubic inch top ends. We've been running the CVO cylinder heads or what he's been doing up standard cylinder heads. And then 58 mil throttle bodies, different cams, different valve springs. And then going and getting them dynoed and then, you know, little teething problems along the way, like replacing all, obviously we're putting, up, we're putting Jap Japanese wheels in them, so we're making all the wheel spaces, making all the brakes fit, brake lines, different clutch cables, you know, everything, every, when you look at it, you know, it still looks like a Harley when you have a quick look at it, but like, when I look at it, or, you know, the customer looks at it, you know, you can see that everything's been changed and modified on there, the, the steering stops have been changed, so we don't need them to turn around and roundabout on a racetrack, you know, it's, you actually on a racetrack, um, you, on a lot of race bikes, they, you limit the steering because you only need to turn it like that much, so the handlebars can't jump out of your hands and start going, what, 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 like that, you know? So just, yeah, everything on them has been modified. It's a, it's a massive frame-up job, you know? So I did it once just to tick the box and then ended up all of a sudden I was like eight years deep. Yeah. Now I've done it nine times the TT now, so. And it worked for, for me to get different rides in the UK, different, like better teams and what's one more races since the TT. Haven't really looked back since, so it's worked real good for my career and yeah, it leaves me working here at the moment while the COVID freaking absolutely destroyed me for this year and last year. Yeah, so there's plenty of people that are keen and there's more people showing interest, so. And I'll go out today, like I said, and uh, get my knee down and hopefully not write the thing off. <laughs> and obviously we're selling them and we're putting people out in the racetrack with them, same as the bikes that we leave the workshop every day. These things have to be 100%. I've all got my name on it and when they go out there, a million people are going to go out and watch them. So I don't want them blowing up and breaking down or, you know, people crashing them. So it's huge, big, big responsibility. But we're getting, we're getting through it. It'll, it'll, it'll all happen when we get them all out there. And, 10, 12, 15 of them are lined up out there on a the track. It's going to be awesome. Even the three of them here right now looks amazing, you know? What are you doing to this one? Fin up. Full uh, factory um, sprockets. Right. These are the beasts made up. Wow. These are the race bikes. Beautiful. So I like working on the race bikes because 
Because that's my, what you do. I do my one day a week here. <laughs> <laughs> There's two things I like doing is machining and working on race bikes. That's it. Everything else I get I get angry if he tries to get me to do other shit. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> These are Kawasaki ZX7 wheels. Right. Which right um, what we do here we make them fit the uh, the diners. So the rear sets which fit to the diners. Right. So we just there's the prototypes. So um, so I can get your knee down and control the bike a bit better. Yep. So uh, and uh, how did it go at the test good. track? Yeah, you happy? Yeah, it's uh, surprisingly, well, I handled surprisingly well. Yep. Wasn't, um, didn't do the old, the Harley Wii, which I thought they were going to do. Like in the American races, they, they seem to have this big weave right. down the straight. I think that's with our rear sets that we've made up, actually, there's more weight over the back end. Uh, I, I didn't get one weave at all. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sprocket and then run um, O-ring change, which is the same thing as what you'd run on a superbike as well. So. Right, okay. Full on, prepared, ready for the track. That's good, good fun. Oh yeah. Time we go out there, like we went out there with the suspension set up that time, and, and with these with these Harleys now, because we're the first ones doing it, I can't Google like you know how to do it, and that's why people it's you know people from all over the world are ringing me like how do we get that wheel to fit in that bike, and how do we do this, and how do we do that? Like, Mate, long story, you know, it's not like go go to here, go to the Harley dealership and buy this bit and that bit, and it'll work, but it might not going to work, you know. So each time we go out there, we um, have a different bit of a different setup on the bike just so we can. Um, when, when we give the people the bikes, you know, at, at the end of it, I want them to be right. I don't want them to be, you know, I don't want to be selling them something and then sell them something again. We're going to go out there and get it right, you know, the forks and the suspension and the ground clearance we need and, you know, the setup with the rear set foot pegs and everything, so the, the bike's done. And then, this is how much they're going to cost and then, you, you know, away you go. We've done every tool. We've got, the, we've got longer forks in it now and some rear set stabos made up. First time out on them tonight, which obviously makes a massive difference. Lay down the donor. This is good, it's plenty of experience building these engines and that too now, which is it's gonna go hand in hand next year when we get our dyno and start pumping these things out, it'll be good. Making the shop really work for them. We want to do what we want to have. That's that's as wide as you can go. Obviously, the, the rear sets are longer forks, they're jacked up back end and making a massive difference. So they're still, you know, it's made out of steel, um, and you know, they're, they're both probably we probably easily would have taken, oh, you know, 50, 50 kilos or more of weight off them. You know, the exhaust system and the big solid steel wheels and the aluminium handlebars and all the aluminium bits and pieces, you know, like that were replaced on them. But at Malala, like even a lot of the slower hairpins and everything, they've got these things have got so much grunt that an R1 or a ZX10 one of these bikes here, you can just hit the throttle hard and the thing will just grunt away. And sure, when the thing gets to 100 mile an hour or whatever, the Japanese four-cylinder bike is gonna, you know, go and leave it behind. But he's still doing 240 k's an hour, you know, which is still fast. And when we're all, we've all got the same engine, we've all got the same gearing, when we're all out there doing 240 k's an hour, it doesn't matter whether you're racing posty bikes or anything, 
when there's ten, 10 people on the same thing and they're having a race, it's a race, you know. So yeah. we're out there doing wheelies and putting them on the back wheel and you know, and making a whole show of it. There's three of them lined up here, is unreal. And you've been to Talent Bend and seen them out there. People come from everywhere to look. When, when we've got a whole two pitch sheds full of them and all the Harley bands flying and the fields, flags, and everything, it's going to be you know, a real spectacle, you know. Everyone's seen, you go out there and watch a chat bike, you don't know whether it's a Suzuki or a BMW or a, what it is, but these ones, you know, people are going to go watch it just because it's a Harley.